As we begin, we acknowledge we are gathered in the territories of various Indigenous peoples, and we further recognize their stewardship of these lands in which we live, learn, work, and play. Welcome everyone to our spring series of OTF Connects webinars entitled and themed, What Works For Me Might Work For You. More specifically, welcome to this webinar, Choose Your Own Adventure, facilitated by Cameron Steltman. Cameron is an ETFO member who comes to us from the Halton District School Board. He's uh, over his 10 year career uh, taught kindergarten through grade seven. And most recently he was a teacher librarian at a school in Burlington. Cameron is uh, passionate about the use of instructional technology to support effective uh, pedagogy and also student engagement uh, and learning. And he's certainly no stranger to OTF. He is a past member of the OTF Curriculum Forum Steering Committee that brings together the 50 plus uh, provincial subject division associations. And he's also, uh, among other things, been a facilitator at OTF technology conferences. Uh, if you haven't managed to locate him yet on Twitter, you can find him at Mr. Steltman. So without uh, further ado, I'd like to turn over the adventure to Cameron. Welcome, Cameron. All right, thank you very much, Ian. Um, so good to hear from you and uh, good to see you. Um, thanks to everybody who, uh, who came today. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, as Ian said, he's got uh, conversations that you can chat with him on the chat. I'll try and have mine up as well. Um, and I just have the video up for to see myself, so I know if I'm looking a little bit too weird, but if there's anything happening that you're not sure about, just uh, send in a, a chat message, or if you want to chime in or raise your hand, we can do that too. So I'll just uh, share my screen now, and we can get started um, on our very own adventure. I'm very excited. All right. So... All right, here we go. So Choose Your Own Adventures with me, Cameron Stutman. So welcome. I'm we'll just going to presentation mode. So today what I'm hoping we can do is kind of just walk through a process. I'm sharing a template with you that you're going to be able to fill in for yourself. So this is a concept that has worked for me in teaching, in sharing learning for students, but also in engaging students in their own learning so that they can kind of create their own. So when we're working through today, I don't want you to think about just what I'm saying, but think about how you can adapt this learning to whatever grade you teach. That's what I find so cool about a choose your own adventure story is that it's wide open. It can have math, it can have science, it can have both. It can be literacy, it can be anything that you need it to. The only limitation is your own creativity. So while we're working today, don't get stuck or hung up on the little things that I'm doing. Just worry about like, how can I make this my own? Because this is not just my idea. It's an idea that, that has come and been around for a long, long time, as you'll see. So with that, let's get going. Um, as Ian so kindly said, um, I am Cameron Stelman. I can be found on Twitter at Mr. Stelman if you need anything. Um, and this is my girls. Uh, there's Vera and Stella, my six and my four-year-old. And this was us in Manitoba, my wife, Jacy. Um, so if anybody wanted to chat in on the little chat box there and say where they are all coming from, I'm joining us from Burlington. So I will check out that. Chat box. Ooh, there it goes. Cambridge, Toronto, Waterloo, Brampton, Muskoka, Whitby. Wow. They are coming in fast and furious. El Monte. Hey, Burlington. All right. Lots of Toronto, Barry, Scarborough. So amazing. Just amazing. So welcome to everyone from wherever you are joining us from. And thank you for choosing today to take your time to, uh, to work on this with us. It's just so exciting that we had this many people sign up and everybody wanted to do it. So, um, Oh, Lori, I am at John T. Tuck is my school that I will be going back to um, in September. Here's hoping, right? We're all going to be there. So today's plan. Um, I no longer can see the chat, so that's just a warning to anyone else. So if you do have a question, uh, you can pass it off to Ian and he will let me know. So but today's plan is we're going to look quickly at what is a choose your own adventure? Why do we choose our own adventures? How do we do it? questions about it and anything you have, and a little bit of bonus learning to extend that for yourselves. And on most slides, you're going to see two links here. Um, one is Steltman CYOA, the bit.ly slash Steltman CYOA. And what that's going to do is automatically force you to make a copy of this slideshow. So you have your very own copy that you can mess around with, do whatever you like. It's all yours. The only caveat being you must have a Google um, account to do that. 
Um, the other link, which for anybody who doesn't have a Google account might be a little bit better, if you go to bit.ly slash view Steltman CYOA, you actually just get to view this Choose Your Own Adventure story, and then you can choose to file, make a copy when you do have a Google account. So just wanted to make sure you knew what those were and why those were there. And with that said, let's rock and roll. So what are these? Well, it's a story that you're in control of. You're in control of every single aspect of the story. And so what I always like to tell my students is, you know what, with this great power comes great responsibility. So let's use that. So who remembers choose your own adventure stories from this? I remember way back this being the most exciting thing for me, going to the library, taking out choose your own adventure stories, and then realizing that I hated to lose and reading from the back to the front knowing that, okay, well, if this is the good ending, what do I have to do to work my way backwards? And it really got me engaged in how stories are created. And eventually I would do them properly, but I remember really cheating on them at first. So anybody else remember these, uh, remember these stories? Yeah, love these books. Amazing. Yeah, they were so much fun, right? I found it just a new way to experience reading, something where it was more engaging, more interactive. And what we're going to be doing is taking them and just updating them for the 21st century in two different really cool ways. First being Google Slides, and then the second way, which I'm going to just leave you with to ponder on your own, is using Scratch to actually code them, which is a lot of fun too. All right. So that said, why are we doing it? Well, like I said, they are engaging. Students love to create them, read them, and read each other's. It when we've created a class set of these, when everybody has created their own stories, this becomes the most popular part in our reading. They say, if we have the Chromebooks, can we read each other's stories? And they'll read through them and give feedback to each other and then update their stories to make them better and then realize, hey, I could make an even better story than this. So they'll, they're so engaged that they wanna make more and they'll make them on their own time. They're versatile. You can use them with a wide variety of subjects. Like I said, the only limitation is really your imagination. So you as a teacher, how can I use them? But how can I inspire my students to use them in a variety of ways? There's multiple entry points. They can be very, very simple as I'm going to showcase today, or you can work your way up to a lot more complex. They don't just have to follow this one template that I'm going to showcase, or you can use coding to do it and get involved in Scratch. It's differentiated. Many, many, you can have it set up so that different students can succeed and it integrates almost any subject. So before we get going, I wanted to showcase a few examples of what I'm saying. So um, I was teaching grade six and I had a uh, student in my class who had autism who was, he was very, very obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy. Um, and he wasn't all that social, but he got really into this idea of making a choose your own adventure story. And he talked to them and it was, he talked to this group of students and this group of students, one, two, three, four, five of them were not friends in class really but they had all had the same idea and they saw how much fun they could have in making it. And on their own, they developed a choose your own adventure story that if we could slide down is over 75 slides long. So it was a social piece for my student who had autism. It was a learning piece for all my other students for learning about him, but also about how to create these stories. And this was something that they didn't do in class at all like this was all done at home by them so i just thought what a neat way to engage students so i really really like that um just popped up on my chat there perfect thank you ian so yeah it's something so much fun so let me show you what they can look like because we really don't want to read that story that it was not an actual story that we did um so i'm going to showcase first a student example of how we engage it with space so one of our units was space and i let them make a choose your own adventure story and the only goal was that they had to include 20 space facts. So they could do whatever research they wanted and I wanted those facts to guide their story. So let's go through this. So here we are, the army. You've wanted to be a pilot all your life. You've been through Air Cadets and today you are going to the course to join the army. You're a fit person, male or female. I like that inclusivity. You go through the course and qualify to be a military pilot. You wanna have a party or sit down in peace and quiet. Well, I've been cooped up. I always wanna throw a party at your party at your party, someone you've never met before is there. You talk to them, they offer to fly a spaceship. Hmm. They ask you how much you want to get paid and you said $3,500. The man said you'd be paid $5,000. You want to be a pilot, but the kind of money the man offered would provide you lots for your family. Follow this link, so we click the link. All right, so now we, I'm not gonna read the whole story, but now we have another choice. Do you want to be a pilot or an astronaut? I feel like an astronaut. Whoa, we go up in space. Uh, we should probably do the mission we were assigned. It sounds good. 
They tell you we need to come back for more training. Seven days till launch. It's been a month. We're trained really well. Launch day. Here we go. Nervous as we're walking in. You sit in your seat. I'm in space. <clears throat> Starting to feel the pressure. Oh, you then realize it will be 221 days. Oh my goodness. You brought your computer. We're FaceTiming. Life is good. 113 days later. So now we've got some choices and we're, so this is well over. Oh no, I didn't use the jets. We're stuck. We should have used them. We don't have enough food. Oh no. So we pick this. The ship isn't strong enough. Your crew says that it was not strong enough. They get angry and they send you home in an escape pod. The end. Well, at least for you. So now my story is over. Obviously I didn't win. Um, and there's a feedback form created so I can let the student know how they did. And so you just pop in your name, tell them how they did, what can they improve on. So in our class, it's always about, you can always tell me good job, but I'm not interested in good job. How do we make how do we make it so that people really want to do better? So we need to give specific feedback. So he's asking, tell the truth. What could I focus on? Why'd you rate it? Did you like it? Did you find my Easter egg? And so now once he puts in this little question in the back of his story, everybody's like, oh, I gotta go read that story again. Um, and so that is how we can engage and use a, um, a feedback form to go with our choose your own adventure story. So building in that full writing cycle. Um, what I did then with my grade fives the following year is we used Inanimate Alice, which is a transmedia story. So it's a story that includes um, video, sound, it has some gamified aspects, and it's really, really cool. So if you're looking for it, it's here. And it's a variety of episodes that follow a character, Alice, as she grows up. So eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, and then the final one, I think she's 16 or 17 years old. Um, and what it allows you to do is really get involved because they're using the different aspects of media to connect you to her story. Um, so I think it, I thought it was so cool. Um, and my students were like, okay, well, we'll make choose your own adventure stories that include inanimate Alice. What happens next to her, the following episode. Um, if you're looking, if you go into featured classrooms, there's actually a little, a little blurb on my class and what we did in there, um, which if you wanted to see is there. But what was so cool is my students were able to create just a plethora of different choose your own adventure stories that all focused on the same link. How do we continue this character of Alice as she's growing up? What happens next to her? But the cool thing too, what I really liked is we were able to put links to episodes, titles, but also who gave you feedback? Who did you get to check your work? And did Mr. Steltman finally get a ch chance to check your work? when you handed it in so that we knew when everything was done, then it was ready to be shared because these are actually shared on inanimatealice.com. So they knew that there was an authentic purpose to them. So we can just click on one. We'll just click on the first one. All right, let's try that again. And what it showcases, um, one cool thing too, if you notice the last of their word um, says present. So if you are creating a slideshow and when you're sharing it out, you want it to go into full screen mode automatically for someone. If you change the word edit to present, it will automatically force you into presentation mode. So let's see what this looks like. So these screenshots and stills are exactly the way it feels with Inanimate Alice. Um, she's found a way to include music in hers. So it'll, if you click on the link, it opens a YouTube video in the background. But what we do now is we're actually working through the story just like it was inside of watching an actual Inanimate Alice episode. Um, what I like about this is they've really worked on the animations piece. So we really focused on the media piece. How do we engage our readers through media. Um, and so they've used the animations to slowly have different things pop up, different words pop up, pictures pop up, um, and we can go through and create live links. So it can start out, like I said, it can start out very, very simple, which I'm gonna show you today, and you can work it in and get more and more in depth. So she's really told a great story here um, as we move along. If you click on the different links, we can go through. She has a player. There's a lot of the elements of the story she's included in hers using GIFs to create a feeling. Having a picture pop up. So it's really, really neat how deep you can go with these. So she's described a place. Hey, well, let's check out the bedroom. You can learn here. This is our bedroom. It's not the best, but it works. 
go back. So they've really learned how to link it all together. So I just, I was blown away with how they created them and how much depth they were able to include and the engagement while they were doing it. So if you're interested in those, I do have, I have the links live and in the slideshows so that you can have those as well. Um, but I wanted to show you what students have created. This is, these are just my, my students and what they've done. So always blown away with how amazing kids are. So that said, what does the curriculum say about choose your own adventure stories? And here it is directly by putting their thoughts into words and supporting the words with visual images in a range of media, students acquire knowledge and deepen their understanding of the content in all school subjects. Writing also helps students to better understand their own thoughts and feelings and the events in their lives. So that's what they're doing. They're taking visual images and a ton of different media to create a story that gives meaning to their life. Um, I'm just gonna check the chat. My board doesn't seem to support feedback forms. Um, that's a great question, Bev, um, and something we would have to talk about afterwards and maybe even just with your IT person. Specific boards, I know as long as you can use Google Slides, then you can build the stories and that's the important part and you could find a different medium to create your own um, feedback forms if you wanted to. All right, so how do we do it well? This is, I've created here, uh, my goodness, um, a flow chart for you that you can print out or share out with your students, especially if you're sharing this assignment out home at home with them. They could see the flow chart. This just creates an auto copy template. Um, and what students can do is they plan out their story. This is so, so important. No matter what age they are, we have to work through the planning with their students. So they actually updated it, made it a little bit fancier. Um, and this is how your very first and I always tell students, just follow this template for the very, very first one. Because this template will allow you to be successful on the first one. And once you see how it works the first time, you can go back and start a new story and have, have different groups and different threads and different branches that take you to different places. But if you make the first one this way, at least you'll understand the concept. So that's something I've always told my students. I mean, you can make those choices for yourself. And what this does is it just walks us through what needs to be done on each slide. So we need to have a story title, picture names, group, describe our character, describe the setting, and make a choice. So what we are going to do today with our time is I'm going to work my way through one branch of the story and we're going to see how it happens. So stories all have four endings or when you follow this template, a story has four different endings. Um, one, two, three, four, you can see at the bottom there. And then each ending will link to a follow, like an, an official the end slide that allows them to restart and often contains a feedback form if you're able to put that in. So what I like is, yeah, you can make a, you make a copy of the flow chart from the bit.ly link. All you have to do is just click on that link inside the slideshow and then you can get it. And yes, we will be talking about getting their images for free too. Great questions. So here we go. Let me show you exactly how we're going to do it. So the first thing to know is it starts out in your drive right in here. And I hope everybody can see it. Um, and again, I'm just going to pause and take a deep breath. I get so excited that I sometimes talk way too fast. So if you need me to slow down, please don't be afraid to pop that in the chat. Um, luckily this will be recorded so we can watch it and you can put me on like half speed and we'll see how it works there. Um, so inside of Drive, you just click new and then Google Slides and it allows you to create and share a new slideshow. Breathing is so important, especially at these times. One thing to know for your students, they're gonna wanna use all kinds of different layouts and themes and whatever. You just want simple light or simple dark for this because we need blank slides because we're going to ch be choosing our own backgrounds. We're going to be choosing our own pictures. So we need a blank template so that the embedded pieces that they have in these themes don't mess up your story. So I tell my students, I know it's fun to use other ones, but we create lots of slideshows. So just go with simple light or simple dark. So I'm just going to leave this one for now. I'm going to call it example. Choose your own adventure. So the Choose Your Own Adventure story starts out, as we see on our lovely little flowchart here, we need to have 12 slides. Because it's an interlinked presentation, meaning one slide links to another slide, um, and that's how you're getting your choices involved, you have to have all of your slides created first. And I don't know how many times you tell students this, but somehow it never, the message never comes up and they'll be like, I can't link, I, I can't even link to slide 12. And you're like, well, it's because slide 12 doesn't exist yet. So step one is always, always 
add some slides. So I just add these basic ones to start and we can, cause you can always change layout afterwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, and I did just want to point out um, for anyone who's like, oh, this is really, really fast. Don't worry, I have embedded a video on how to build a choose your own adventure story within this slideshow. So you could either watch this one back again, or you can actually have that one itself or share that one with your students. Um, it's from an older presentation, but it's there and it walks through the, these exact same steps, just so you know. But I need to have my flow chart up or otherwise I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so we've got our 12 slides. And one thing you wanna make sure you tell your students, one, use the flow chart. So write down what's going to be happening in each of the different boxes so that I know Who's my character and what do I need to know about them? What is my setting? Um, and what are the choices going to be? And is one of the endings gonna be a good one? Is the one of them going to be a great one? If you have it planned out just generally with some dot shots, it makes creating the actual slideshow just so much, so much easier. So today we're gonna to be doing a pirate's adventure because I also did that for scratch. So I wanna showcase how that can be done two different ways. So we're gonna do a pirate's adventure and now I know that that's what it is. Um, one of my endings is gonna be finding treasure. One of my endings is going to be finding an old boot. One of my endings is going to lose a parrot and one of them is going to make friends with a parrot and be friends forever. I'm only gonna show you one aspect of it, but it's good to have that planned out so we know what's going to happen. Um, some things that are helpful to know, as placeholders on some of your slides, if you use the title box, it makes linking to them much easier. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Um, so I know that the end is slide 12, so it's good to know that. Um, and let's just start by making our story. So we're gonna call it The Pirate's Adventure. It's by Cameron, and here we go. And one thing, again, tell your students, words first. If we get our story written first, it's easier not to get lost in the pictures because it is so easy to lose students to the media piece. The media piece is really fun and it makes the story a lot better, but you need to have the bones of your story written down first. So that's my advice for that. Um, I even just use basic, I use just Arial and I don't change the fonts, I don't change the colors, I don't do anything until I get the words done and then I go back through and we talk about how we can fonts, animations, all those other fun bits. Um, yeah, they will spend hours on fonts, but not until after they have written their story. Please, please, please. That's, that's, that's my advice anyways. Good luck. Um, so let's tell our story. Once upon a time, there was a lonely pirate. He sat on in his shack and longed for adventure. He, were, he wondered where he could go to find this adventure. Perfect, we've got a story, we've got our punctuation, life is good, check back in with our flow chart. So that was slide two, we're told all about him or her. Mine is, a, it's me, I'm gonna be the pirate in my mind. I always wanted to be a pirate. And then we're gonna jump into slide three. So describe your setting and start your story. Have the character make their first choice, A or B. Everywhere there's a highlight in this flow chart is where your choices happen. So let's make the choices. He wondered where he could find his venture. So this is setting, leave it as a title. Uh, the shack felt too small and was dusty. The pirate saw a strange crab on the ground. The crab scared him and he ran out of the shack. Should he go towards the beach or the jungle? All right, so now this is the trick. And, and for, it's amazing, it's the simplest thing. Um, but it's just wild how once you see it, like how we can use this trick to make this, you're all set. So he should he go to the beach or towards the jungle? Well, we need to know two things here. And one of them is right in our slideshow. Uh, slide four is if he goes to A. Slide eight is if he goes to B. So slide four and slide eight. 
let's do it. So slide four is going to be beach. And again, these titles are just placeholders so that I can stay organized in creating my story. Jungle. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's check the chat real quick. Um, I do check-ins. Um, because we, you can use it on Google Classroom, you can always check in. I also am pulling students or going around, walking around the classroom to see where everybody's at at all these stages. I walk them through this whole process as they watch me on the first one. They share back their first ones. We talk about it. It doesn't take that long because we make it very, very simple. And then, uh, and then we go from there. Thanks for coming, Sally. Don't worry, it's gonna be recorded. You'll get it anyways. All right, so we are back. So here's the trick. We've labeled our two choices, beach or jungle. So let's highlight the word that we want to link. Now, what's cool here is Control K or Command K or this button right here. So highlight your word. This is a create link button. You can also insert a link. So insert link. Now, what it allows you to do is I could link to the Wikipedia page, but what's really cool is you link to slides inside this presentation. So we said slide four was the beach. And now you're seeing right here why it's so important to label or give titles to your different slides because now you see slide four was beach. Okay, I will apply that. The next thing, or the jungle. So control K, command K, or insert link. Again, we're going to slides in this presentation. And we're gonna go down. And we're gonna click on the slide eight for jungle and apply. So now when I'm inside of it, if I click on that link, when I'm in present mode, it automatically whoosh, takes me to the jungle. I've got the title so I know what I'm doing and I'm staying organized and I can get through the story. So let's work through the jungle aspect. The pirate he walked slowly towards the jungle. Suddenly, a large parrot appeared and it squawked. Dig for treasure. Hmm. All right, let's check out our slideshow to make sure we know what's going on. So we're just continuing the story. Parrot appears, tells him to squawk to, to uh, dig for treasure. The pirate looked suspiciously, suspiciously at the parrot. And I'm gonna leave that slide for now because the next slide, slide number nine, is where we have our next choice. So, after what felt like years, the pirate said, what did you say? Yar, what did you say? What did you say? Question mark. Dig for a treasure. Respond to the parrot. This is a great time too, if you're talking even about punctuation, uh, grammar, all those kind of different rules, we can talk about how important they are um, within this context because the students are engaged, they wanna tell the story properly. So it can be about whatever focus you want for your students. So if it's quotation marks, it's a great time to talk about that. Um, so just another idea as it pops into my funny little head. Um, after what felt like years, the pirate said, what did you say? Tag for treasure, respond to the parrot. The pirate was faced with a choice. Should he dig or treasure or leave the parrot? So now again, we've got our two choices and I see a chat, so we will pop it up for a second and be right back to it. Um, I've done this with grade three. I've done this with some grade twos. I've done it with all the way up to grade six um, and then the depth of character or the depth of story really is whatever you're trying to get out of it. Um, I know for sure it can be done with sevens and eights. You just have to find new ways to do it, um, which is why I offer that scratch option at the end. Um, a success criteria is a great idea, but I can't come up with just one for you right now because for us to have a success criteria, I'm not sure what direction you want to take it. And that's what's so cool about this is that yours could be about science or it could be about grammar rules or it could be about whatever it is that you need for your students or just telling a great story. It's totally up to you. So yeah, a success criteria is an awesome idea. Um, and if you build it together, the students really know what they're looking for. And that really helps in their feedback forms that they can create for themselves. And I think it can be done in PowerPoint. I just can't make any promises on that. 
All right, so the pirate was faced with a choice. Should he dig for treasure or leave the parrot? We're gonna see where we're supposed to take these choices. Again, referring back to our flow chart. So slide nine leads to another choice. Excuse me. Slide 10 or slide 11. Okay, well, we can do that pretty easily. Let's do it. So dig for treasure. So again, this is slide 10 is dig. And slide 11 was leave the parrot. All right, so what we are going to do is we are going to dig for treasure and link to, should we dig for treasure? So control K, slides in this presentation, and dig, apply. Or should we leave the parrot? All right, so again, highlight, control K or insert link, slides in this presentation, go down and find, leave the parrot. And it's just so helpful to know that you're Links are gonna work if you've labeled it properly. Um, and so let's do it. So the pirate decides to dig for, let's do this answer. The pirate looks that bird right in the eye. Shouts, no, and stalks off towards a waterfall. All right, so he's left the pirate and stalks off towards a waterfall. He regrets this choice immediately. As he becomes lost, lonely, and afraid. He never finds his way out of that jungle and spends each day missing the bird. So here's what we've done now is we've, we've finished one whole aspect of our story. We've written it all the way out to the end. So the last thing is remember every single ending, the ones on slide six, seven, nine, and 10, all link to slide 12 because slide 12, as slides in this presentation, slide 12 allows us to embed a feedback form. Thanks for reading. Please leave feedback. To try again. And you can actually send people back to the start of your story. So with want to try again, again, control K, you can now link right up to the very first slide. So when the game's over or the story's been read, they just click on that and poof, we're back up at the start of the pirate's adventure. That was a lot. I know that was a lot. And I apologize for speaking so quickly. So before we get into the multimedia aspects, are there any questions that anyone had about how that process works? Cameron, if I can just go back to something earlier in the, in the chat, Claudia D was asking about whether there's a site uh, that you direct students to go to, uh, to get images for free. I'm, I'm assuming that's uh, copyright free or yeah, and that will be what we are going to jump into in one minute. Um, Perfect. As long as we are all good on this aspect of it. So I do think that that's kind of like, it's just like a simple little thing, just the control K link to slides inside of a presentation, but it has powerful, powerful consequences. So if there's no questions. We will jump into the multimedia aspect of this. Let's do it. So remember, of course, there is a video here that I have created prior, as well as this video that's going to be created, which is super meta crazy. Um, so some ideas to consider as the students are writing the story. So right now we're going to talk about integrating media within our story. So the most important thing that we need to do is direct them to a place where they can get images, but that images that are copyright free, because that's a huge thing that we can teach our students. So students love doing the pictures um, and we're going to talk about that in one sec. I'm just going to read this thing on the chat. Can I set up the adventure? and then assign everyone their own copy so students can make their own font changes. You definitely, definitely could, but I feel like that, um, Sharon, um, but I feel like that may take away from some of the student autonomy in this. I think as long as you've shared the idea, the template of that, you know, it's gonna be 12 slides on your first one, I think that's usually more than enough. Um, and then you'll get more out of them if they feel like they have control of every aspect about, about it. Um, the authentic piece where they know their peers are gonna be reading it again, are gonna draw them in and they, they, I've 
only had really, really good success with this. So let's talk about getting some pictures and backgrounds within our Choose Your Own Adventure story. So this is going to lead us to an amazing website, which I don't know if you've seen, but I love it. It is called Unsplash, unsplash.com. So unsplash.com allows beautiful free pictures powered by creators. So this is free high resolution photos for anyone, for any reason. Completely, you can use it to sell things. So if you've got your own small business, you can do that. Um, and they have thousands and thousands of photos and they're beautiful. Um, I, I haven't really shared this website with too many people because I really like using it for my presentations. It makes me look really good, but today you're in on the secret. So here it is. So we're doing a pirate's adventure. So um, a pirate's adventure, I want a shack on the beach. I know I'm gonna need a picture of that shack on beach. Now this may be a little bit too, oh, maybe not. Here we go. So look at this. We've got some great pictures right off the hop. Um, and we know they're good to use. I love this photo. So all you're gonna do here is you're gonna download that photo and it's gonna pop right onto there. And then when you're inside of your Choose Your Own Adventure story, you can actually drag it right in. Now that is one way you can do it and that works awesome. You can see the pictures on there and that works really, really well when they're pulling their pictures in. But I wanna start with backgrounds and I think this would be a great background for my story. So how do I do that? Well, when you're not, if you see when I've clicked on the words, I've got a different toolbar than if I just click outside. But when I just click outside, I actually choose which image I wanna use. Um, and you can upload it camera by URL. You can do a Google image search, which also allows you to find images. If you don't want your students to be going outside of your website, a Google image search will allow you to also search copyright available photos. So I could search for beach and it'll pull up again, some amazing photos. So two really cool ways you can do it. Um, actually, I kind of like this picture better. So there we go. Insert that done. And we can see that I've got a really great background for my pirate adventure. So copyright free photos are that simple for this, uh, definitely for background. So when you're in here, remember if you're clicked on the word, you won't see the word background, just click out and you have a background. And there we go, we've got our first background. And this story already looks so much better. It's also a great chance to talk to students about color schemes and what colors work on something. Or do you sometimes need to put a background behind your letters? Because if you put a highlight behind your letters, it makes them a little bit more readable. So these are great things to talk about, which fonts you like, all of those things. And this is where you can really get creative, but also know that you can really lose students in it. So you need to make sure that they understand that the important part is getting a story that is readable first. And then if there's time, then they can work on all the fun things like making your font in permanent marker. All right, so let's carry on. So we now we need to insert more images. So there's a lonely pirate. He sat in his shack and longed for an adventure. So we still have this photo. So um, we're going to pull it up because I want to show you something really, really cool that you can do with photos. So photos, once they're inside of Google Slides, are so neat. If you double click on them or use this crop image button, you can make them any shape you want. So I'm going to make this a circle. So there it is. He's sitting in his beach hut. People are getting a great image of what the beach hut looks like. There's that. And there's the hut. And remember, you can still add a background if you wanted to. Maybe. Uh, night beach Let's see what it is at night and we can see some other cool images insert that and we've got a background there and it'll be behind again and here's his little beach hut that's on the beach and we've added more elements to our story again i realize that this is not ideal <laughs> for the story um just want to show you the different options that are available again thinking about what font colors work so that people can actually read your story once upon a time there was a lonely pirate Longed for adventure, wondered where he could go, and now he's got a setting. Should he go towards the beach or the jungle? And here's something else really cool that you can do. So I'm gonna insert an image this way now. So insert image, um, search the web. And remember, the ones that you search when we're inside of here usually are the ones we want, but um, copyright free. They had been in the past, but again, if you're not sure, showcasing Unsplash is a great thing for students so that they know where some different photos will be that they can use. Um, and so we are looking for a jungle. All right, so I'm gonna just download a couple good jungle photos. Here's one, there's one, and this one looks like a cool path. So I'm gonna download a few of those. Um, and we're gonna jump back into our story. So I'm gonna insert image from my computer. 
is one way to go about it. And here they are, the downloaded ones. Open it up. And there's a great jungle photo, I'm guessing. All right, and again, I'm gonna crop it into a different shape. This one's going to be in a, again, it doesn't really matter, but there we go, a nice triangle. And I'm gonna put this under where it says jungle. Something neat about photos that you insert, they can also be links. So I can actually, if I right click on this image that I've inserted, it can also be a link for me. So control K, you can link it to something in this presentation. So I know if I wanna to go to the jungle, you can go to jungle. So if students don't like how it looks with the words being blue or wanted to add another option, you can actually just make the photos the link. So now check it out. If I go into present mode, and click on this photo of the jungle, I'm automatically in a jungle, which is great. So now I need a picture of a parrot, but I also wanna show you how we can use animations to have things pop up. So we're in the jungle, so we need a background of a jungle. I know I downloaded a bunch, so let's try this one. Pops it in. Done. Okay, can't really read the words. Just make them white quickly. Delete the title because we don't need that any longer. Suddenly a large parrot appeared in Squawk Dig for treasure. All right, well, we need a parrot. So let's find a parrot. Hey, this works incredible. I don't know what kind of parrot this is, but I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna download that picture of a parrot, pop it in. And I'm gonna crop it a bit. So if you double click on a picture, you can also crop on your own. It gives, you don't have to only crop into shapes. So I can actually just pull down and crop exactly what pieces of the parrot I want. So when you have students who've always been looking for the perfect picture, like oh, I wanna use this picture of a parrot, but there's two parrots in it. Well, just crop out the other parrot and use what you got. Um, so now we've got this picture of a parrot. He's gonna appear. So we want the readers to read it first and then we want this parrot to pop up. All right, so he's gonna show up here. If you right click on that parrot, you can actually animate him so that he shows up. So he's gonna fade in on click or fly in from the top or fly in from the bottom. So let's have him fly in on the top when we click and we'll slow it down. And now let's check out this slide to see how that looks. Suddenly, a large parrot appeared in Squawk Dig for Treasure. The pirate looks suspiciously at the parrot. And whoop, in comes a large parrot. Well, that's pretty great. I love how that looks. Other than it covers my words, something you may want to talk to your students about. So there we go. We've now included some multimedia. We've got some animation. And we're working our way through the rest of our story. So what did you say? Dig for treasure or leave the parrot? Okay, so we decided that we should probably have a picture of some treasure. Perfect. There it is. The image is too large. Okay, so know that not everything's going to work. That's okay. You can download other ones, try a large variety, and we are good to go. So what we are going to do now though, is I wanna showcase how we can also include media in our story. Um, audio is a huge part of stories. Um, I know that my board now is actually not allowing YouTube to be used by students under 13 but I do wanna still showcase how to do this in case you wanted your students to learn it. Um, you can actually have a YouTube video play music on a slide. So if it's really important that there's music on a slide, you can insert a YouTube video and have it automatically play. Let me show you how that works. It's also kind of neat to know how to insert this YouTube video if you're using slides for presentations at home that you're creating for your students. It might be a neat thing to do. So you can actually search all of YouTube or insert your own videos that you've created. So maybe we want some happy, music. It searches YouTube for us. There's happy music. You can preview it to find out. Um, these are very, very long. So maybe we want the Pharrell happy music video in there. I'm going to insert it. And what you can do though, is you can see that option. It now starts by offering format options. So you can pick which part of the song you want to hear. Well, maybe I want to start at one minute and 34 seconds, and I wanna finish at one minute, 45 seconds. Great, 
That's awesome. That's where it's going to go from. And it's going to autoplay when presenting. So it's, as soon as I get on this slide, I'm going to hear this. Now, because it's going to be on this slide and you're going to hear it automatically, you can actually just hide it. So I'm going to have this, my image, I'm going to change the order so that this treasure box is in the front. And then this video, which is automatically going to play, and I don't want anybody to know it's there because I'm not interested in them seeing the video, should automatically play behind it. No one will ever know it's there. Let's see if that works. Great parrot. All right. It kind of worked the way I wanted. Not exactly. So I would maybe put it somewhere less obvious than right in the exact middle and just hide it in a top corner, but it automatically plays the music. So that's how we include multimedia within our stories. And then we work our way through, and that's how you really create a choose your own adventure story. I'm gonna pause there now and see if there are any questions. All right. I don't see any just yet, uh, Cameron. Okay. Oh, here we go. And the chat popped up. Where did you insert videos? How do you hide that video? Great question. So when you're inserting videos, awesome. You just click insert video and you can't just insert, you can't just insert video audio from YouTube. It can't just be the audio. It has to be the video itself. So you just go to insert video, you search whatever video you wanted and to hide it, you just have it autoplay. So when format options come up, you can right click and click format options. Um, you click autoplay when presenting and it'll automatically start when you get on that slide. And then you just make it really, really, really small. If it's on YouTube, you're okay to use it um, in Google Slides. Um, and if your students have Google Slides on their computers, anybody who has any school that is Google Apps for Education has Google Slides. Um, that's one part of the suite of Google Slides. So they, if you're if you're a Google school, you definitely have Google Slides. I, I hope that helps. All right. So that said, it is time to carry on. Oh, we got one more question. Oh, the other cool thing, if you're not interested in Unsplash, although after showcasing it the way I did, I can't see how you wouldn't be, Pixabay is also a great website for free images that you can use. All right, two more questions I saw, let's see them. Are all images on Unsplash safe for kids? Great, great question, Claudia. I have honestly no idea. I've never searched anything sketchy and in all of my searches, I've never found anything sketchy, but I don't wanna make that promise um, in case there is. I, I have no idea that's something I should check out. Um, it is for like, obviously for students, like you'd have to be searching pretty specifically for that, which for me would be a great learning opportunity to talk about um, digital citizenship, norms in the classroom, what's expected. Um, and just those being, uh, be, making sure you're being that teacher to those students when they're, when they're choosing to do things that maybe they shouldn't be doing. Um, Pixabay, yeah, Pixabay is, you can see right here on my screen, it looks like this, one and a half million stunning free images and royalty free stock. So again, you, it's a lot like Unsplash, same kind of thing. We could look up Parrot. I'm sure there'd be a Parrot. Oh, lots and tons of different ones. So even some uh, cartoony type ones, which are pretty great. So this is just another option for your students who can, uh, for some copyright free, free photos again. I'm not sure all images are safe or unsafe. Uh, I don't think anywhere, even I know for sure in Google images, they certainly aren't. So having those conversations with your students maybe beforehand, if that's something something you're worried about and where, where you go if, if some of those options, have, if they've taken the wrong path as they do. Um, okay. I'm wondering how to use this tool for teaching newspaper article writing. Well, I encourage you to think about it. Um, you can cut parrots, pictures like the parrot. Yeah. It is a cut around. It's not a cut around in the way that we, uh, to cut an image, you double click on it and you can choose which part of an image you can use, but it's not like a draw out. I just want to use this one part of an image. You actually have to, it's, it's going to retain a shape of some sort. So you can crop, but not to the, it, not as great as maybe you would want. Thank you. Oh. 
Yeah. All right. Cool. So that said, we are going to move on because I know we are getting close to that time and I have class tonight as well. So we've got to get moving. Um, we've done that. Cool. Now I have included, because I knew we would not get to this. Here's how you can use peer feedback with comments. So you can use the commenting feature within Google, Do in, within Google Slides so that students can talk about punctuation, grammar, all those little things. Here's a how-to video on how to do that. You just click on it, boom, pops it up. You're good to go. And how do you build a Google feedback form for this story and how to embed it in your presentation. So once you've created a feedback form, you can actually just take the link and you will link to it just like we did to, to, to our slides within the presentation. So imagine this was my form. All you would do is get your shareable link. By right click, get shareable link. Head to your story at the end. Highlight the words feedback. Control K or insert link and paste that link in. And now when people read your story, if they click on that link, it will take them to the feedback form you've created. Okay, this is all though, I promise you, walked through right within here in CYOA how to video. Very handy dandy. Um, I thought I saw a question. I'm just gonna see, oh, there I can do it again. Wonderful. Please share. All right. Yeah, if he, if you're thinking about uh, newspaper writing, all those kind of things, definitely uh, share with each other. Um, that's that's the best way to do it. I I want to make sure I go through the broad strokes before we get into specifics for anyone. Um, when you are sharing your stories, you can create a Google form, which asks people to just share their stories for your class, so that all your stories are in one place. Because when you finish a when you finish when the whole class is filled out of um, the form, you can create a spreadsheet which will then have all your stories in one place so all i did in my form is ask for their first name only the title of their story the link to their story and the link to their feedback form so that i know i have all of their aspects and then that automatically goes onto a spreadsheet um or you can just create a spreadsheet that everyone has access to like i did for this one where each student put their did it all by themselves and i had nothing to do with it i just trusted them that they would do it properly and they all had editing access to make sure that they could all do it and that worked really well too i mean you just have to do what's best for your students so that's how you share the stories out all right so what is really cool though if you're interested in pushing it further going a little bit farther going a little bit deeper have older students gifted students need an extension for those people you can use scratch which is a coding program to create a choose your own adventure story. So I'm going to walk you through the one I created, which tells the exact same story we just did. But this one includes voice, which I think really adds to it. And the fact that it can be coded to work is so much fun. So I am going to wait for the project to load. And remember, you can visit this to yourself. And joy of scratch is when you go to this story, if you sign in, it'll say remix. And you can take this story and change it and make it your own. So here we go. Let's read this story. You need to do is type yes if you want to do it, or no if you don't. Good luck. Oh, there once was a pirate from Ireland. Call me the Irish pirate. I recognize that fella. I think I need an adventure. Answer yes or no. Okay, well, we're gonna do the same path we took. So we'll say no. So he's going for a nature walk. Hey. Oh my, I've never seen such a big parrot in me life. Squawk, you should dig for treasure. All right, what do you think? Should I trust the parrot? Should I dig for treasure here? I'm gonna say no, because that's what we also did in our story, and I don't wanna ruin the adventure for anybody who wants to go the other way or share this out with their students. So no, we're not going to trust that filthy bird. So I said goodbye to that filthy bird. And you know what? I never saw him again. And I walked all over that jungle, but I never got over the loss of me parrot. And that's the end of that story. So. You can see all photos courtesy of Unsplash, my story, the end. And if you type yes here to play again, it actually allows you to play it again. So really, really cool. And I'll just kind of show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, it's a variety of characters, all who have the same face, which uh, you can just duplicate. And it just walks you through. And then each one is coded to do certain things when messages are sent. And I have a whole how-to video on this. I'm actually presenting it on TVO in 
on May 27th, I believe, um, on the TVO Hour of Power for junior students so that they can do it. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll be tweeting that link out too when it comes out. Um, I saw I had a few more questions, so I'm just gonna see if I can grab them. Groovy, groovy, groovy. Yes, Laura, I love Scratch too. It is so awesome. All right, that all said, it is two minutes before the time I was supposed to end. So I am quite a big fan of being on time, which and surprise because it doesn't often happen. Um, if there is, yeah, students could do a CYOA slide and then go to do to Scratch to do another version, 100%, right? Like they can then take their story and extend it further. The coding that it takes in Scratch was challenging for me, but so rewarding because it's so instant. And being able to include your voice really makes it a lot of fun. Um, a picture of yourself. There's so many options with with Scratch. So I, I really, really recommend it. Um, start with this though, especially if you've got younger students, start with making a slideshow this way. Go through the process so they kind of see how it all works for them. And then after that, you can really take it in any direction you want. Want, or let them control the direction it takes because it is going to go in so many different directions if you empower those students to do it. Students are so cool. Like they're just amazing with what they can do and when they're excited. So I think it will excite them. I hope that I've inspired you a little bit with it because I still get so excited about it. I've talked about it so many times, but yet every time I do it, it's, it's come back to me and people come back and say, yes, my kids loved it. This is the only way they want to do writing or my student who never wrote before now loves writing. So I hope it works. If you have any questions, let me know. You know how to find me. I'm, I'm on Twitter at Mr. Steltman. So follow or um, I, I really, really, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed being here. And I, so if there's anything you guys need, let me know. I'm here for the next little while. And uh, yeah, thank you. I do have them plan their story first. That's a really, really good question. Um, you have them, the planning template I give them is my flow chart like I'd mentioned. So if they take the flowchart, which is a few slides back here, um, but if they're on the flowchart, they can then print it out and just jot down main ideas. I don't want to spend too much time planning out their first story because I want them to see how a successful one looks like. And then once we've kind of got over that hurdle of creating the first one, then it's into building it like a proper, proper story. High school history. Oh, Stephanie, if you do that, I'd love to see them. And, and please, if you create them with your students, Send me the links on Twitter or send me a private message. Send me an email if you want. I would love to see your stories. Every time I've had them shared back with me, it's, it's just been incredible. So this, that's so great. I love that people are seeing how this works. And uh, thank you for your very kind words. I, I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, if there's anything else, let me know. I'm right here. Cameron, just uh, briefly, I'm going to take over the, the screen if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. All right, thanks. Excuse me. So uh, on behalf of, uh, of OTF and uh, all our colleagues in this webinar, uh, Cameron, I'd like to thank you very much for sharing your very obvious uh, passion, uh, wisdom, uh, expertise, and, and skill. You've given us uh, lots to think about, uh, lots of uh, procedural writing, actually modeling taking us uh, through there, lots of connections to, uh, to assessment and uh, extensions into uh, numerous uh, subject areas and, and divisions. So it's, it's quite clear um, that you're, you're on top of your, uh, your game here and it's, it's incredible of you to generously to share that uh, with all of us uh, today. So uh, again, on, on our behalf, uh, much gratitude uh, for uh, taking up this offer and this invitation uh, so enthusiastically. I'd like also to thank everyone uh, for embracing this OTF professional learning opportunity, opportunity of the OTF Connects uh, series this spring. And uh, Cameron's is just an example of why we uh, really underscore the idea in our professional learning of for teachers by teachers. So uh, we value your feedback. So in a moment, I'm going to uh, add the link to our evaluation form for this webinar. And uh, we'd really appreciate you taking uh, a few minutes of your time in the next, uh, either, either now or in the next uh, few hours, or certainly in the next 24 to provide us uh, with some feedback. We use that both for our current offerings and also for our, our future offerings. And, um, and in the next uh, few days, uh, you'll receive a, um, a, a follow-up email. And in that will be the evaluation uh, form. 
uh, and also a link to uh, Cameron's uh, Google Slides, which he shared uh, earlier, uh, so that you can either copy or view those slides again, and then a link to the archived version of this, uh, of this webinar. So again, I want to thank everyone uh, for joining us today. I will uh, stop the recording uh, shortly, and then uh, Cameron's agreed just to stay for maybe behind for another 10 minutes, and I'll, I'll stay along uh, with you in case there are any uh, lingering questions. Uh, but if, if you need to leave, that's uh, totally understandable. And again, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. Over to you, uh, Cameron. We're just going to stop the recording.